that is nice. Your fulfilling ox head. Huh. Colonel Blacksmith sent me this package. He's uh, changing his shop location, so he's going through his things and offered up these, generously offered up a bunch of these tools that he made. And one of the things I do not have is a, I have a, a pretty decent felling axe, but certainly not quite with this big a bit on it. And not that heavy, so that's going to come in handy. So I'm going to put a handle on this and get it to the cabin. duty. I need to uh, tie that together. I need another set of cross braces higher up and then probably one on uh, this lower end once I get above this two foot platform. That way that way I can have it braced without being in my way. So I, obviously if I put cross bracing across the front here and end up end up uh, having it in my way as I'm trying to work on the log. I might be able to put a straight one on top though. That might help. Anyway, it's sturdy enough for this level. I got well, I do want to make it sturdier as I go up though. Hey everybody, welcome back to the cabin. It's a cold one this morning. It's minus uh, 11 without the wind, minus 11 Celsius. And as you can see, we've got some more snow and a lot more forecast to come over the next uh, about 36 hours. It's But where I'm at, it's um, going to be a mix of snow, rain, sleet, ice pellets. So it's going to be interesting to see what we actually get and what that does to my work site here. But, just looking at the uniformity of what happens, how monochrome the environment is when winter hits. And it's so dramatic, such a dramatic change from one day to the next. When one day I'm looking at greenery and complexity and all the variety of vegetation and everything to, you know, basically a flat white surface. And especially as winter progresses and we get several feet of snow here, Everything just gets flattened right out. You can snowmobile walk or snowshoe or ski right over top of obstructions like all this mess down here. That'll end up just being flat and you can walk over it and you forget how difficult the, uh, the terrain it is to navigate typically. But um, yeah, it just, just evens it out and it actually, it's kind of like adding culture to chaos. So you get this um, environment of complexity and variety, like I said, with tons of different color variations a variety of vegetation and and wildlife um, that's also another shocking thing so you get all this life and then all of a sudden no life when snow comes or very very little life in fact you think you're <laughs> there's a an animal behind every tree and you discover in the winter or by the lack of tracks that that's not true there's actually very little active wildlife in a in a typical northern climate or environment like this. Um, you know, a lot of that is because the winter conditions are so harsh, the food is so um, uh, scarce, and the temperature is so difficult, and the snow is so deep for, for uh, maneuvering, that um, it, it automatically reduces population of wildlife. So moose, yeah, there's several moose around here, and they're gonna come in, in and out feeding on my maples here, but. Um, not <laughs> they're not tons there's not tons the 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 deer they're just traveling through here at this time of year to head to their yards so you'll get a whole bunch of deer in one spot under typically in a coniferous forest where the snow is held up in the trees and the branches instead of on the ground so the snow depths are lesser um, get lowland so the ground is um, there's more rotting vegetation 
in the ground and groundwater that's not, not freezing. So that tends to kind of add some heat, some melting. So all that, all the animals kind of congregate in areas like that. And then there's just mass voids um, throughout the rest of the landscape. Uh, it kind of reminds me, and it just hit me for some reason when this snow fell, this, this, uh, this movement in, in uh, interior design, interior decorating to white and gray monochromatic simple uh, in indoor landscapes or environments to me it's always been so confusing but I can see the just the way the society our society has developed and the point we're at in mod modernity is uh, it's like there's a fear of complexity and a and uh, a fear of of wild and a feel fear of wild spaces and uh, the trend has been to create this this uh, simplistic safe environment inside you know I live in Ontario Canada and we have um, the, the estimates vary but from what I've read 250,000 lakes over 25 acres in this province and over one and a quarter million if if you include uh, lakes rivers and water bodies over one acre in size so this, for example, would be considered a water body, but it's not considered a lake. You know, I get a pond here, a pond up there, you know, maybe five acre pond up at the top of this, and then a maybe a 20 acre pond, I would say, up at the top that feeds most of this, this watershed here, this creek that continues to grow as it gets downstream. But uh, my point is that in this province, traditionally, we've had the urban population and then this cottage industry where um, people go to their cottages have a secondary home essentially a vacation home that's north of in Ontario north of the major development which is a, along the lakeshore along the the uh, lakeshore of on Lake Ontario but also that's the border to the US so climate is so much different like down there it could be sunny right now and well above zero with hardly any snow all, all all winter typically and then you come up just a few hours north and you can get into many feet of snow in a much colder climate so people tend to tended to develop and live and, and work in those areas and then come up into the north to play so the cottages are lying like every accessible lake in the province so everybody flocks to there and in the past these cottages were rustic they were you know a lot of them off-grid or very low in uh, in amenities and they're rustically built so more natural so you had you know wood interiors and stone fireplaces and um, just a real getaway from uh, the modern lifestyle now what you see in cottage country is these white and gray stark minimalistic homes essentially that are mimicking the concrete jungle and it and it's like that fear of nature has been brought now up into the north and that people um they just i don't know if their lives are just becoming so complex because modern life is complex so it's even though they're in this sterile and um, urban environment their lives are complex enough that it feels like they're fighting nature and fighting complexity and fighting chaos so they want their cottages then to to be sort of an escape from any kind of complexity so they decorate them minimalistic and, and monochromatic and to me it's like so cold i just can't even imagine that being a, a comfortable living space there's some, especially somewhere to escape to um, and i see winter as that too so we're sort of mimicking winter in these in, indoor spaces by having it match this very bland landscape so white gray you know brown um gray like it's just a flat surface flat to uh, flat uh, color scape and to me i kind of like it at first but it then gets old as you spend so much time outside as i do it uh, you start to then crave that complexity again and the variation in color and life and everything else that's going on in the spring and summer and and then waning in fall. Um, I don't know. I, like I said, I think it's a, 
I think it's a problem. I think it's something that in uh, tier design is happening because of that sort of that fear of wild spaces. And I think what's happening is that we're going to start develop developing as humans into subspecies. We're going to have this one subspecies that's um, you know, in, being integrated with artificial intelligence, uh, participating in this virtual reality world, this virtual world, living in these concrete jungles, and then setting aside these spaces, these wild spaces where they don't even go into those and try to get their na nature fixed through, you know, watching somebody like me doing this kind of thing or other nature programs, or maybe not even, maybe just diverging completely from from nature and I, I do think that's going to happen I think we're going to see this modern species or subspecies of humans that's just completely disconnected and fears wild spaces and the natural environment and then you're going to get the dinosaurs like me that go down a different path and uh, you know revert back to living closer to the land and and needing these wild spaces even more than ever so I think there's going to be some conflict between us that want to live in here and the people that are in the urban environments that understand that we need a, a healthy environment in order to have a healthy planet and in order to provide the oxygen and the clean water and the food and all the other things that we need as humans. Um, they're going to want to set these spaces aside to make sure they're healthy. We have healthy ecosystems and maybe take people out of those ecosystems. Well, people like us are trying to integrate ourselves back into nature and live closer to it, which is what I'm doing here. Um, I'm probably, well, I'm <laughs> different than most people, I guess, in this modern day and age. And I know a lot of you are going to be similar to me, but, but we actually like these natural spaces and we, we crave that complexity and that chaos that you see in nature. And we're not fearful of, uh, you know, the things that are hiding behind every tree. We're not trying to create a living space that's so stark and sterile that there can't be a snake, be, you know, in our green lawns, can't be a snake hiding in the grass, and there can't be a bear or wolf hiding behind the tree because we've denuded the landscape of any kind of obstruction or any kind of habitat for something that might hurt us. Uh, I'm just the complete opposite, and this starkness is kind of pretty right now, but I'll be craving it, it uh, soon enough. I'll be looking forward to spring. and seeing all the green life come back up seeing this construction zone that i find disturbing right now where everything's become just sand and all the beautiful moss and pine needles and everything that were here are now you know pushed aside or buried under the uh buried under the sand and construction debris i want to see this space once the cabin's up return back to nature get some stuff replanted all around here and get that wildlife and that nature coming right up to my doorstep again you know I hope that uh, I hope that enough people will continue to to see that and appreciate that and go um, in that direction rather than into that modern uh, sterile uh, direction that humanity seems to be going in and kind of embrace this and find ways to work within it instead of against it Anyway, that being said, I've got a lot of snow to remove. <laughs> this, uh, I put tarps up over top of the walls and over the all my logs so that I can just get them, I sweep them off and get right back to work. But it's t there's so much snow now on these tarps that it's collecting, pulling them tight. And now with everything that's coming in tonight and over the next two or three days, it uh, could potentially be buried and then frozen and solid. And I can't move these tarps, so I'm going to do that now. Anyway. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it. I look forward to seeing you back here at the cabin next time. Take care.